This is the gown design here. It is a high-low hemline that is short on one side and longer on the other side. It also has a high neckline and it is sleeveless. I'm going to be working from my basic bodies front and back to create the patterns for this gown. This I have done in a previous tutorial if you haven't checked it out already or you could check out the PDF downloadable link down below in this video description. I also have in my fabric of choice here, which is this emerald green duchess satin. I already had a roll of this fabric, but I ended up using about three to four meters for this gown. If you don't have the pattern already done, these are the measurements that you need to keep in mind. Or even if you're working from your basic bodies, I recommend remeasuring yourself with your current body measurements to ensure that the dress fits perfectly on you or on your client. So the first thing I've done here is I've traced off my front basic bodies onto a folded pattern paper and that's because I want to end up with a full front so I can go ahead and plan the hemline of the gown. So I'm going to open up the folded piece of paper like so, spread it out nice and wide and I'm going to be marking my gown length on the shorter side, on this side closer to the bottom of the screen and then the length for the longer side on the other side of the pattern you can decide to have the dress really dramatic and long on one side and nice and short on the other side next up i'm extending the side seam for the shorter side as well as for the longer side and then i'm going to be planning in the hemline so for the hemline of the dress i wanted it to flow in such a way that it curves from the shorter side down to the longer side the one thing i would say is if you want it to be fuller i suggest either making the a-line even wider so you have more volume at the bottom of the dress or you can even change and play around with the shape if you want to so once I've drawn in my hemline and I'm happy with the shape of it, the next thing I'm doing here is I am dropping the neckline by one inch and then for the shoulder width itself, I decided to work with a width of two inches because I wanted it slightly slimmer. So now I'm just going in to draw in the new neckline for the front, doing this for both sides so they mirror each other perfectly. And then I'm going to be drawing in an arm curve. Now I wanted an arm curve that sort of looked like it was pointing in and then coming out towards the shoulder and the arm. So I drew this by hand first. And when I was happy with the shape, I went back in with my pattern master and my marker pen to make the lines a whole lot more visible, clean and clearer for me to work with. So this I'm going to do for this side of the front and then mirror the same shape on the other side of the front. You can either go ahead and repeat the same thing or simply just fold the pattern paper in such a way that you can see the lines and then just trace it over to the other side. So the next thing I'm going to be working on is drawing in a facing panel. My facing is about 3 to 4 inches wide down that center front and it is about 2.5 inches wide on the side seam. So this I'm just connecting together to have a curved hemline along the bottom of the facing and the facing is going to help me finish the neckline and the arm curve. The thing is because of the shape of that arm curve you want to have a facing to finish it off in such a way that is nice and tidy. So I went ahead to add a one centimeter seam allowance all the way around my front pattern and from this front we're going to be tracing off the facing piece which is the one that you can see here. I traced it off in a separate pattern paper, added my seam allowance and annotations and then I'm going to be tracing off the back panels as well because you want the side seams to match like exact exact. So I'm tracing off the back panels in two parts. So there is a seam going through that center back and that would allow me to attach my zip. So I'm just drawing in a line that divides my back into two panels, adding a seam allowance on both sides of my back panel. So I have a left and a right and I'm drawing in a slightly shallower arm curve for my back because I don't want it to be as deep as the front drawing in the shoulder line and then for the back neckline is shallower as well and is not as deep. You can change these around if you want to but I decided to just keep it nice and shallow on the back neckline, the back arm curve and added a seam allowance to divide my back panel into two. 
So for my back facing, I essentially just traced off one side of, it could be the left or the right hand side because they're essentially the same shape since nothing changes on that top half of the dress. And then I traced off the neck around the arm curve and around that bottom line that we drew for our front facing and that becomes the back facing of the gown. So these are all of the patterns that you should end up with, your facing pieces, your main dress at front and back. And because it's an asymmetric hemline, you would need to have two pieces for your back one for the left and one for the right hand side and i shaped in the waistline a little bit inwards that's not really compulsory but i always like to add like a dart in the middle of my back panels so when i fix in my zip i don't have a zip bulge so I'm going to go ahead and pin down all of my pattern pieces on my fabric and cut everything out. You need to cut all of your backs, your facings, as well as your main dress front. I decided not to line this dress because the material is actually quite thick and this dress I wore in August. So it was really hot when I wore this dress, hence the reason for not having lining panels. Now for the main gown stitching, the first thing I'm going to be attaching is the front facing onto the main front of the dress and I am going to be sewing the necklines together as well as the arm curves and in doing this, it would allow me to join the shoulder point later on. So I went ahead to pin down my back facings onto my main sort of back gown and I'm going to be stitching up around the neckline and around the arm curve so when I turn these inside out give them a nice press I have a finish that looks like this if you need to sort of like cut snips along the seam so the folds are a lot smoother I recommend doing that as well for the shoulder joining you would need to pass one shoulder into the other one like this and you want to ensure that the facing parts are together and the main dress parts are together so when you stitch up that shoulder seam around the curve like this this is actually quite tricky to sew because it's such a tight seam so you can even do it by hand if you feel like it's too much hassle or too tight you can do that by hand turn it inside out and press that seam to give you this outcome here now this is a great way to like stitch up shoulder seams so that you don't have the seam showing on the inside of your gown so once that is all done i'm going to go ahead and sew the main side seams of the dress and i'm going to be sewing from the facing down all the way to the hemline i'm doing this for the shorter side and i'm doing this for the longer side and in sewing from the facing across that arm curve down to the hemline when you turn that facing downwards on the inside of the gown you finish off the bottom of your arm curve nice and neatly as well so after stitching that up i went ahead to overlock all of my seams and my hemlines and the bottom of the facing panels as well so i know that i can move on to the next step i gave my gown a nice press tried it on to see if i was happy with it and so far so good So once you're happy with the outcome at this point, we are going to go ahead to fix the zip on the center back seam. Before attaching the zip, I'm going to be closing off that bottom center back seam up until the point that your zip ends. So starting from the bottom, I'm going to be stitching up until about midway because I'm using a long dress invisible zip. And then I'm going to attach the zip into the open side of this particular seam. So now I'm just stitching up this seam close like so. Remember to do my back stitch at the end. And then afterwards, pin my zip in a matching color into the open side of the zip. I'm using an invisible zip because I just wanted a nice cleaning, clean finish on the back of the dress. Now using a zip footer, I'm stitching my zip into the seam like so. I have a dedicated tutorial showing you how to sew invisible zips into seams if you don't have an idea of how they work. But after stitching up the both sides of the zip into both sides of that center back seam, I'm going to be using the edge of the facing to conceal the edge of that top end of the zip so i'm going to be sewing it close on this side and on the other side as well so when you turn this inside out that top edge of the back neckline is finished so nicely so beautifully and to ensure that it finishes off and folds out neatly i recommend trimming off any excess zip edge or seam allowance on that particular 
edge of your back neckline so i'm just going out here to fold out the zip so i can reveal the edge of the teeth like this i did this for both sides and check if your zip works if they align at the top and along that point where the facing meets on the left and the right hand side and you can make any changes if you want to at this point next up oh and finally i am going ahead to fold and sew the hemline of the gown to finish it up after this i went ahead to give my dress a good nice press to relax all of my seams trying it on before going out for my birthday photo shoot this dress i made in august is hands raising for the lack of sleeves and the different hair but i just had so much fun wearing this dress for the shoot i think i'm actually wear it again indoors for christmas and for the festivities but it turned out really well a little bit sexy a little bit elegant but i love 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 the outcome if you enjoyed this tutorial let me know your thoughts down below if you'd like to recreate it as well be my guest let me see your recreations and tag me on instagram at kim dave designs and until my next video have a good morning afternoon and evening wherever you are bye